Hello again, we are back with another Gully Vlog. He doesn't like saying that. Not totally sold <laughs> on that name. I want to come up something else. <laughs> um, we should probably say before we get started that we've been quite busy this week with a bunch of um, other stuff, uh, a lot of administrative stuff for the company that had to be done. Uh, so it means that we haven't perhaps been able to spend quite as much time on Gulliver as we would have liked. Having said that though, we've still got some stuff to show you, so um, let's get on with it. So we started off making some puppet models. We started with the monkey, they're in the second land that Gulliver travels to, Brobdingnag, there is a monkey. So we thought we'd give him a go first, Munkle, we've nicknamed him. And as with the set model that you saw last week, we like to make our puppet models out of pizza boxes. Uh, so it's all recycled. Um, I started off making the head and really I just wanted to get a sense of the shape to see whether it's monkey-like enough, whether it's kind of cute. Uh, so you can see there just a rough skeletal shape of the head. Um, we decided quite quickly that we didn't want him to be a moving mouth puppet because we think during performance that the puppet's going to have to be swapped between puppeteers quite swiftly so it's much easier to do that with a handle on the back of the head instead. Um, obviously, when I make the real monkey, it'll probably be filled in a bit more with papier mache and things, but I do quite like this. Mm, I, yeah, I really like Raggedy this. brown paper. Gives them a little bit of personality mm. and texture. Also gives it a little bit of movement, actually, when you move the head. So then I'd made, once I'd finished that, I passed the head on to Noel to try and make a body. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing about making any of these puppets for a new show is that unless you're making um, exactly the same thing again, or you're making a, a style of puppet that you've made before, you're always feeling your way in the dark to a certain extent. So we knew that we wanted to have, uh, a, a, we wanted him to be able to do a couple of things in particular. We wanted him to be able to jump, and we'll show you a little video after this of you know where you can see him a little closer. And um, and we wanted him to be able to land back into that comfortable sort of monkey squat, which is quite characteristic. Um, Antonio's just hanging onto his feet because he slides about a bit on this table. But if we turn him around, you can just see that he's got a couple of pennies on the back of his feet there. And uh, we do that quite often to, to add a little bit of weight here and there when needed. And what that does is it helps his legs to, to hang back slightly so that when he lands, he's landing with his toes first. And we've also got a little brace on the back of the legs to stop them from locking out. Because uh, you also have a problem where if you try and land them and their legs are locked out, obviously they'll just, they'll just stick like that. So as he is, when he comes down, he um, sorry, yeah. he comes down into quite a nice little squat. You can also move the arms a little bit. But all of this was very much an experiment. Uh, turned out pretty well in the end, and we probably will go with something like this. Um, and as Antonio was saying, you know, it's all made of recycled card and paper. But a lot of the end result will also be made as much as you know, as much as possible. We make set and props, costumes, um, puppets rather out of uh, recycled materials. So we then moved on to trying to make a little Lilliputian. Uh, the most difficult thing with the Lilliputians is trying to work out how big or small to make them, because obviously if they're too tiny, when you're sat a certain way back in the audience, you're not going to be able to see them. But if they're too big, equally they're going to be slightly strange when you're talking about them being Yeah, I mean, they're really supposed to be tiny. Yeah. Miniature. So we, we landed on this sort of rough size we think is about right for the head. So it probably stand about this tall, we reckon, something like that, maybe a tiny bit shorter. And we decided again that moving mouth was not a good idea for the Lilliputians because from a certain way back, that could be imperceptible anyway. Uh, you probably can't see him too well in fact on there, but he's got a little nose, little mouth, two little eyes there. Again, this kind of textured fluffy brown paper hair, which I'm, I'm quite liking. So once I'd made the head, which I put a little handle on the back again, I started to try and work out the mechanism for some basic movement of, so we wanted to be able to nod his head and shake his head uh, I'm not usually in charge of mechanisms, usually for a good reason, I'm not particularly good at it. Noel's usually in charge of that, so I'm sure we'll probably think of a better way of doing that. But that'll be the next step, the body and the legs, and we're thinking maybe we can put two fingers in and march them across. The other thing I was doing this week was just finishing off some of the, oh sorry dude, the little costume designs. So we have these here. Um, getting a sense of the colour for each land, getting a feel for it, mm. letting our imaginations run a little bit wild. Um, That's a really lovely thing about this story as well, is that because it goes to so many different lands and there's so many kind of weird and wonderful characters, you can really go to town in sort of different directions. And it's nice to be able to 
to start to get a real clear character of each land and really be able to visualise each other. Starting to get a good sense of the show. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, thank you again for watching, and uh, we are going to get back to work, and hopefully, we'll have more to show you next time. Thank you.